So Red Star OS was developed by the Korea Computer Center, obviously based in North Korea. And there's so far been three major versions, so this is 3.0 here. So Red Star OS actually features a modified version of the uh, Mozilla Firefox browser. And they actually changed the name to, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, uh, Naynara. I think it's pronounced Naynara, but I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. So if you guys know how to pronounce N-A-E-N-A-R-A, -E which officially, you know, it, it like literally translates to my country in uh, Korean, I think. Essentially what Naynara, and I'm sorry again if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm going to say that right now because I'm 100% I'm guaranteeing you that I'm pronouncing that wrong. But essentially what that is, is um, the North Korean intranet. Um, it's kind of what they allow uh, the public to access. And you can get to that by using uh, this, you know, modified Firefox Naynara browser. Um, and there's, you know, some other things uh, like a basic text editor, email client, audio, video, player, games. Um, and version 3 which is what we're using, is very, very similar, like I was saying, to OS X. Um, it has a, you know, it, it looks literally very, very similar, almost exactly the same. They have the dock, the menu bar, the same visual styles. And it also has um, a piece of software called Wine, which is a, um, like, you know, official software. It's not, like, you know, just like Firefox. It's not something that's, you know, specifically made for the software. But Wine is a program that allows you to run uh, Windows-based programs on OS X and uh, Linux as well. So, you know, kind of a way for people that I, I, I guess were still using, you know, Microsoft Windows and they were forced to use this or they, you know, migrated to this. They could still run those, uh, you know, Windows programs that they were used to on uh, Red Star OS. Um, now, as I was saying, it does use uh, KDE3, which is a sort of uh, desktop type uh, uh, graphical user interface. It's um, an open source uh, project, I, I, I believe. It stands for the K desktop environment. It's f featured in things uh, like KUbuntu, which is just uh, Ubuntu with uh, KDE, and it's going to be in here as well. And yeah, this is the first version that looks like exactly like OS X. Previous versions actually looked more like Windows. Um, so yeah, that is kind of uh, a sort of overview, sort of everything that you need to know about Red Star OS um, as we get into it. And we're gonna probably have um, some fun, you know, um, you know, kind of, kind of looking at this because um, this is, I'm actually uh, really excited because this, I didn't even think that th this was going to work, to be honest. Like when I saw it was um, like, you know, giving me uh, that uh, like black screen uh, at the beginning of the video, I was like, oh, it's probably not going to work. And it actually started working. So um, yeah, it's just taking a while to write everything from the CD. I don't know what exactly it's doing. Hopefully it's not like formatting my host computer somehow, but um, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to pause the video here, we're going to let this uh, finish up the installation, and we will be right back. Okay, so we're back, and my uh, host PC speaker actually just beeped, so I'm guessing that means that it's done, and I think this means we're going to restart the installation. Hopefully it's not going to form anything. <laughs> um, and okay, we got a menu, untitled, press enter, I saw 3.0, so I think that means it's the actual OS. We have a very Mac-like uh, looking boot screen here. Yeah, this whole thing is, I'm, I'm going to probably say everything's very Mac-like because this whole thing is, it's really Mac-like. Um, we're just going to let this boot up here. We have a, yep, here it is. Here we go. Here's the <laughs> oh my god, this thing is like literally just like Mac OS X, except we got instead, instead of the uh, uh, Apple logo, we have like the North Korean star up here. Um, and you'll actually notice references in here to the Windows key, which I find interesting because I'm guessing they're using Windows keyboards. Um, so the first thing I'm going to try to figure out how to do is change the language because I do not want to not be able to read anything. Um, don't know what any of this does. Like, I seriously have no idea what any of this does. Um, you see, they've they've actually put um, uh, the like you know window controls on the left side, just like Mac OS X is. Um, 
I'm not sure if I think uh, like Ubuntu Linux and like most of the under or the other uh, like main Linux dishes, I think they have the close buttons on the right. But the only difference is these are like square buttons. So actually, maybe that's English. I just changed it from the letters. I have no idea. Let's just go in. I think this is the settings program. All right, so I actually found um, this WordPress blog uh, on the web here, and I and it kind of shows you how. And I think this this might actually be the same website where I got um, the uh, link to uh, the Red Star OS 3.0 file. But essentially, this um, or or what he says in this blog is, or uh, in this blog post is how to change uh, the system language to English. And there's actually a way to to uh, go about doing that. And there's also a way to change the actual uh, system or the OS installer to English, um, which I thought was was uh, kind of interesting. There's actually a way you can modify a few files on the .iso file. And all, all you have to do is change like one line um, in on like one file and you can run it in you know English. But obviously we're like already past the uh, in, uh, installation process. So we have to go on to changing the system language to English. And to do so, we have to run um, a few uh, commands as root. And what root is, if you're not really familiar with the root, um, essentially the the best way I can kind of put it at, or, or to you is essentially it's a super admin user for uh, Linux systems. And it basically can run any command. It doesn't need um, like, um, you know, like it doesn't have to ask you like oh are you sure that you want to you know perform this command or like it doesn't ask you for your password I, I, I don't believe like it can just run those commands if you're using root now obviously on this system because it's you know North Korea and obviously we wouldn't want or if like we were uh, like the North Korean government we wouldn't want like the people having access to root being able to like get into the back end of the system and things like that so they obviously the people that made this kind of took out uh, root but there's, there, there's actually a way to get root access and it's actually very simple all we have to do is like run this one file that this guy has on here which I have made into a, an ISO file on here it's redstarroot.rpm we're gonna copy this to the desktop I think yeah control C control V still work um, I believe all we have to do is just run this and we'll click this we'll click that okay so we have that um, or this file uh, installed and I think what we have to do now is go and run a command and I'm not sure how we actually do that I think we have to get terminal somehow um, I'm not sure if we even have terminal Okay, so I was finally able to find where the heck, like, the actual terminal is. It was, like, hidden in all these folders that I can't read. So this is the terminal. I was supposed to run the command root sh. And now we are um, under the uh, username is root. So now we have root access simply by running that, that one file. So now all we have to do is run a few commands, which I think I'm going to have to type out manually. And this is going to allow us to change the system language from Korean to uh, English US. Okay, so all we have all we should have to do now is restart. Um, so I'm guessing this means to restart or shut down at least. And I said, okay, there we go. <laughs> it was like wasn't shutting down, and it was doing it. So we just run those commands, um, and here we go. We are back, and now we are running, as you can see, in English, which is nice. I can actually read what the heck we're doing. Um, so they've called. I'm guessing the finder is is the K finder. <laughs> it's put a letter K in front of it. <laughs> That's really great. That's that's just that's some great, um, uh, you know, creative thinking. We're just gonna put the letter K in front of the finder. Um, K finder version 1.0. We can actually go to about this machine, and we can see that it finds like uh, my actual you know processor, which is an AMD A10 with the Radeon graphics, 
and it has two gigs of RAM, just finds 1.7 gigs, which is two gigs of RAM. And the uh, startup disk is Red Star. Uh, more info, it opens up the a, a system profiler, which I, just version 1.0. I think like they, they may have taken like some of the actual Apple applications and just copied them over, which I think they've actually done, or dumb. I think they, they, they've, they've actually done in some cases, um, as you as you can actually see, we have Sog Wang Office, which I'm guessing is an is an office uh, suite of some sorts, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But um, yes, yeah, here's uh, the the Nainera browser that I was talking about. But let's just kind of look at this. Yeah, I know I'm kind of going kind of fast. I need to pace myself here. But you'll notice that now we are back, um, or that this since this program is in uh, like or it's written uh, in only Korean I'm guessing I'm guessing there's no way to change it to English however since the operating system was like originally like because this is based off of like Fedora or something uh, Fedora was originally written in like English so um, obviously like that that English code is still on here so we can still access it and that's essentially what we did so I think we're typing okay we well, we're typing in uh, English like I'm like it's actually using like my actual oh yeah it's, it's actually typing in English I thought it would be using like um, you know like the Korean keyboard but essentially I, I, I'm not sure if it's something that they actually created themselves or if this is just a, like a copy of some other like like a open office or something but yeah that's uh, some uh, like a uh, office suite sort of program so we'll close out of that um, I think this is don't save no, that's not, that's, okay, this is don't save. Um, so yeah, we have that, we have uh, an address book, app link, which I think is, I have no idea, oh no, I think this is, um, yeah, this is what I uh, put onto the system where I have uh, access to the root terminal now. This is not normally on here, I don't believe. Um, we have uh, a calculator, which looks very similar to the Mac OS X calculator. Um, we'll quit out of that. Actually, the system profiler is still running. We, we, we can do the same press and hold on the dock. We'll show it in the K finder. <laughs> Just can't get over that. It's so stupid. I don't know why this thing, I mean, at least, I mean, if you're going to copy OS ten, I mean, why you freaking change finder to K finder? I mean, just keep it as finder. But we have the, um, the CHM viewer, which I think what this actually is, is for them to view... Um, some of their like books or something that they read uh, I think they can actually view it on here like there this is a sort of uh, virtual book reader I don't, I'm not sure if there's any actual files on here but uh, let's see documents no there's there's nothing so but I think this is like as you see it says books here or no bookmarks okay I thought it was a, a, a book reader I, I know there's something like for reading books I'm not really sure what it is but this shows like the globe and a bunch of question marks. So I'm not sure if this is something that like access the internet or something like that. Uh, we have uh, a font book, which is probably going to be the same thing as Mac OS X font book. Um, kind of looks very similar. We got you know, a few system fonts. Uh, that's obviously in Korean. Um, we have Grab, which is same grab program from Mac OS X where it's going to grab part of the screen it creates a uh, uh, you know window maybe a file or how, how do we yeah capture selection drag over and there's our grab so yeah um, we'll quit anyway so we have that we have kcal not iCal we have kcal kphoto not not iPhoto kphoto <laughs> have kcal um which yeah looks very iCal like or calendar like apple doesn't call it iCal anymore apple.com they get a reference to apple.com <laughs> look at that it's blatantly right there you see that this is this is probably the same this is actually probably the same uh, help document that they had for uh, iCal they probably just went in and changed all the i's to k's and just <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> This is ridiculous. This is like, oh my god. I can't believe this. It's right there, apple.com. Like, oh my god. Okay. Um, okay, well, that's. 
That's really interesting. Well, if you were, if you did not think that they just copied apps from OS X, I think this is evidence right here that they did, as there's a link to apple.com. And yeah, it's trying to take you to helpOSX.apple.com. And which, you know, it can't do obviously because I don't, I didn't give it uh, any internet access. But man, I mean, my gosh. Gosh, I, mean, I, I just can't believe it did that. You know, we have uh, one preference. We go to file preferences. Where's, oh no, yeah, KCAL preferences and preference. <laughs> and man, okay, KCAL. Um, yeah, that is, that is great. That is just great. My gosh, okay. All right, guys, well, that's where we're going to have to cut this um, first portion of the Red Star OS video. Um, this portion's been going on for uh, about 30 minutes now, and I just figured, you know, that's kind of uh, the maximum amount of time that I want to make um, one of these videos because it's kind of long uh, already, and there's about, you know, 20 more minutes of, uh, of uh, footage that I have for it, you know, for this video, so I don't really want to you know, put that on in this video, just make it too long. So I'm going to be uploading uh, part two of this video sometime probably uh, next week. So if you guys are, uh, you know, interested in, you know, seeing that, um, definitely be sure to uh, like and subscribe and uh, check back next week and uh, look out for that video. It'll probably uh, be uploaded the Wednesday of uh, next week, whatever date that will be. Um, and as always, guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching and for all of your amazing support here on the channel. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video.